so I think it'd be really interesting. Okay. I think it's pretty cool. Like, it's um, something for us to like get out of our rooms and you know go to whatever. I is great. I just I saw him walking on all throughout the sum summertime. I was riding through campus. I was like, hopefully, like once I, like everything gets everything gets the okay. I was ho hoping that we see like a few concerts going there. We have it out now. It was give give some time. Hopefully, once everything is sorted out with Mother Nature going on, we get some concerts going on. We just can't have it just sitting there for decoration. I like it. I haven't seen anything being done with it, though. I want to see them do something with it, I guess. Hello and welcome back to the President's Table. My name is Dan Jones, the President of Texas A&M University Commerce. And my guest for this segment is uh, David McKenna, our Assistant Vice President for Facilities and Support Services. And David, we were just hearing some comments about our new outdoor amphitheater and uh, why it isn't being used more. So we need to work on that part. I've, I've seen a couple of events out, out there, but I agree we need to be using it all the time. But tell me a little bit about that amphitheater and where the idea came from and what it took to, to get it built. Well, I think the, the genesis of uh, the amphitheater was to develop the bowl area. Mm -hmm. uh, once the old uh, student center went down, uh, there was kind of a, a void there on that end of campus. Uh, and uh, Bob Brown, uh, my boss, uh, mentioned that uh, maybe an amphitheater would be a nice look out there and to look into it. And we began the process of, of looking at a concept for the area, uh, just uh, working into the bowl area and, uh, and integrating that uh, kind of design there. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with uh, Oak Grove Landscaping on a design. Uh, after looking at several uh, amphitheaters in the area of Northeast Texas, and uh, one of the things we came away with, it was a natural fit, and what we did was take it a step further there with the uh, adding of, of some very large stones. I noticed uh, all of those things being hauled in. Yes, they, they average about 2,500 pounds a piece. Wow. And uh, structurally, uh, it, it's as much about holding the area together, but adding that kind of stone to it, which, which lends itself to the look of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's seven tiers from top to bottom, and uh, they are uh, at least 13 feet across, mm -hmm. and which allows a lot of room for uh, students or visitors to sit there, have a blanket, uh, relax. And, uh, you know, from facilities point of view, it's also good for us. Our uh, mowers can get in there and mow it yeah, right, easily right. Uh, and maintain it. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as the number of people, uh, we really don't know how many can get in well, there. Well, that was going to be one of my questions. But, uh, you know, yeah. what are the capacity? I'm sure it's hundreds, several hundreds. hundreds. We think it is hundreds. And then uh, out of that, uh, you know, was the, well, if you've got an amphitheater, what are you looking at? Uh, and right. looking at the... Uh, North end of the BA building, uh, there really we didn't have anything, so we decided to add the stage, mm -hmm. and from there uh, to go and cover it, and, and uh, so that came about, and to build it to match up with the amphitheater. Right. So that was kind of the evolution of. Well, that. And it's a beautiful stage. I mean, we'll talk about the amphitheater in a minute, but the stage itself is, you know, it's big. I mean, you, you can get a Willie Nelson and his family up yeah. there, and it's got all the connections, and right. people can plug in their sound system, and it's got lighting, so. Yeah. It has, we built it, uh, so it's an outdoor facility that, uh, as you say, is kind of a plug and play mm -hmm. uh, with lighting, electrical, and just for any use that you need. You mentioned those uh, big, uh, is that limestone uh, that boulders? Is, that is a, uh, it's a version of the limestone, version, yes. I, I was, you know, it went in this summer and I kind of watched them bring those uh, blocks in there and it, I kind of felt like I was watching the pyramids go up, you know, because they'd, they'd bring those big, and they were, they were roughly shaped when they brought them in, yes. but then they all had to be kind of carved and, right. and fine shaped to fit just right. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, I was really impressed with the quality of the masonry because everything just fits tight, you know, it's symmetrical, it's yes. regular, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite a feat of craftsmanship that went into that construction. It is, and it's not something that uh, they had really gotten into before. Is that right? Uh, they have done a lot of stone work, but uh, not stones quite that size. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> they had to uh, up their work a little bit on the size, but it did go together well, and I'm very pleased with it. And of course, we added a, a handicap seating area at right. the very top of the bowl area, and uh, that, that's been a nice thing just off the Rollins Memorial. Right. And you mentioned the Rollins Memorial, and this that really complements the setting. And uh, the Rollins Memorial 
is a memorial to uh, uh, a young lady who was killed in an automobile accident about six years ago and her friend. And uh, for those who haven't seen it, they really owe it to themselves to come and take a, take yeah. a look at that. There's a water feature and a beautiful sculpture of a lioness mm -hmm. and four cubs yeah. trailing behind her. And the name of the sculpture is The Teacher. Yes. Because the young lady wanted to be a teacher. So it's, it's very moving. And it, it really, with that amphitheater there, it all really kind of hangs together. It does. Uh, we talked a little bit about the location. I've talked to uh, alumni who were here when the old student center mm -hmm. was kind of in its heyday. Mm -hmm. And they talked about that being just sort of a natural gathering place when it was just a mole and right. no, no terraces or anything. But people right. would come out and gather and mm -hmm. have picnics and talk and hang out. So um, we're kind of restoring that now right. and anchoring that side of campus. In terms of um, uh, utilizing it, uh, this Saturday will be tailgate. So I'm assuming we'll have a band out. We'll be having a band out there and some entertainment. And well, it is, it is ready to go. And, and uh, if any of the groups, I know that they are making their reservations through the Sam Rayburn Center and, right. and can do that. And uh, it, is, it is ready to go and uh, fully engaged. Uh, all they have to do, I think, is uh, get in there and uh, get ready to have a good time. Right. I think. Make a phone call. And I, I think my uh, response to the students is uh, use it. You exactly. Know, call the Sam Rayburn Student Center, make a reservation, and uh, we encourage whatever they want to do as long as it's, uh, you know, doesn't break any laws. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, musical performances, uh, dramatic performances, uh, poetry readings, folks. you know, harmonica concerts. Yeah. I mean, what? We even had an ice cream social on it last week, so uh, oh, really? it's <laughs> multi purpose. Yeah. Uh, we got just a couple of minutes left. Uh, let me uh, move on real quickly to a couple of other campus improvements that took place this summer. You guys were really busy in facilities this summer. I bet you were kind of glad to see the <laughs> fall get here. Uh, I think one of the um, one one of the biggest projects, but one of the most visible and attractive projects, is the new signage that's gone up around campus. Well, the signage uh, package was something that uh, we've we've talked about for a while, and we were able to put that together. Uh, and, and working through through PAC and, and uh, marketing and, and got the uh, approvals on the designs and mm -hmm. then it was a matter of, of uh, getting the fabrication and getting it done. This started way back in January. Right. So there was a lot of lead time to getting it done and then getting the placements around campus uh, and then the, of course, the big uh, stone setting we have and that's right. a, a looter's limestone at the main entrance and uh -huh. around the others, uh, which is a little different. So. But a great package of hopefully uh, information that will get people, visitors, students, faculty around campus, and uh, we will look at it and augment it as needed as right. we go through the future. Well, it really gives the, the campus a sense of place and a sense of presence. You know when you're coming onto campus right. and, and the directories are accurate and they show the buildings that actually exist now. So, yes. uh, and, and in fact, I've seen visitors um, studying the map and charting their course forward. A lot of other improvements this summer. We don't really have time to go into them, but uh, I did want to ask you, how much concrete did you pour this summer? Well, we were uh, well over 1,200 yards of concrete, yeah. uh, and that continues. We're uh, pouring the sidewalk in the area at the uh, soccer field today. So oh, good. Okay. <laughs> a little bit more coming in. Great, great. Well, David McKenna, thanks so much for being our guest on this segment of the President's Table, and uh, we look forward to great new improvements in facilities moving forward. Well, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. the time. And we'll be back in a moment for our final segment on the President's Table. Uh, now that these things are here, they're a really awesome tool to utilize. Uh, if you're ever walking around campus, you have no clue what a building is, or if you want to know which direction another building is in reference to that one, uh, just, you know, reference one of these signs. They're really easy to use, and they, you know, pretty simple. I really like them. Um, it's a lot easier to find my way around campus now. 